Alrighty, Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health. I hope everyone had a wonderful Groundhog Day. <laughs> that to me is still by far the funniest holiday. <laughs> and I cannot help but mention it and make fun of it. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a follow-up post on the topic that we're going to go over today in the podcast. Um, but what I wanted today to do today is rethink hypothyroidism and how we think of hypothyroidism. Now, as a bit of a primer, in late 2008, early 2009, I reviewed all the works of Broda Barnes. Um, I was turned on to Broda Barnes by reading Stephen Langer's book, Solve the Riddle of Illness, which was all about Barnes's work. And then I did uh, I read Mark Starr's Type 2 Hypothyroidism as well. And uh, very, very intriguing stuff, uh, particularly Mark Starr's book, because I think it links a lot of the degeneration that Weston A. Price witnessed with um, with a you know a very specific biochemical hormonal uh, abnormality, which is basically having a low body temperature. And I think <clears throat> you know some of the important pieces of the puzzle. Uh, relate back to the metabolism of the whole on a whole and the the body temperature. Now, Barnes thought that when he ran into somebody with symptoms of hypothyroid and a low body temperature, that they were hypothyroid, and uh, gave them desiccated thyroid, which is without question from the research I've done the the medication of choice if you do have a thyroid problem. But the issue is that when people go in and they get their blood tested and they get their thyroid hormone panels done, it registers kind of low, normal. You know, it looks like their thyroid is underperforming, but it's it's still doing its job. It, and it doesn't really show signs of the gland legitimately being unhealthy or damaged or flawed. So a lot of doctors will say, no, you you know, you you don't need thyroid hormone supplementation. I know you may have symptoms of hypothyroid, and you may have low levels, uh, low to normal levels of thyroid hormones, but your gland is fine. I'm not going to give you thyroid hormones. Well, people will go and seek out a doctor that will finally prescribe them the thyroid hormones, and particularly the desiccated thyroid hormones, and their body temperature goes up, they feel better, and they feel like, wow, it really was my thyroid after all. And I know Janie from uh, StopTheThyroidMadness.com, big advocate of, of using the basal body temperature to diagnose type 2 hypothyroidism. Uh, type 2, basically using type 2 to describe that form of hypothyroidism, kind of like we describe uh, type 2 diabetes, which is really nothing wrong with the, with the pancreas. But the symptom, uh, the result of having too much sugar in the blood, is a symptom that is normally associated with not having enough insulin. Um, same thing with the type 2 hypothyroidism. The hormones are there, but the symptoms of having a low metabolism are still present. So what we've seen over the course of 2009 and, and in 2010 here in the early going our people are able to bring up their body temperature, particularly younger people, very, very successfully. So was there anything wrong with their thyroid gland? No, of course not. Just uh, you know, eating more food and getting starch back into their diet or fat or whatever they had been deleting um, and, and resting more and cutting back on stress and getting plenty of sleep and cutting out sugar and all the things that... Uh, that I believe are helpful in terms of raising the metabolism, people seem to be able to be able to follow those and get their temperatures back up. Now, I agree that when you get older, you're more likely to have a low body temperature, and it probably gets increasingly more difficult to bring the body temperature back up. But I still believe that people can do it at any age. It just happens to be a little bit easier and probably happens a lot quicker in people who are still of reproductive age and they've got a lot more uh, hormonal activity going on and, and can fix their problem and restore their metabolism much more much more quickly. 
Now, I'm not saying that it's it's harmful to supplement with thyroid hormones, although Diana Schwartzbein feels, you know, she's very clear that giving people thyroid hormones when they're still making plenty of thyroid hormone is uh, is not a smart strategy and can do harm in other areas. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I'm not an endocrinologist. I'm not a practicing physician or doctor. I do not know what happens. I've not been able to track that. And the fact of the matter is, is that Barnes was able to, by overriding a person's low metabolism using desiccated thyroid, he was able to prevent heart, heart attacks and a lot of cancers able to prevent uh, diabetes and also for people who already had diabetes he was able to prevent further complications and uh, Mark Starr, Stephen Langer the guys that follow Bart Broda Barnes's uh, protocols today have uh, done nothing but echo that same that same finding so very very interesting stuff so the question becomes if you really want to get to the root understand it, fix it it's really a matter of understanding why the metabolism is low, especially if there's nothing wrong with the thyroid gland. Is there, you know, and it's, you know, a lot of times I believe dieting, over exercising, a lot of stress, those things can induce a low metabolism. So it's just a clear cut response to outer stimuli. Your body responds to the messages and the signals that that it's uh, getting and it does the most appropriate thing to protect itself which is slow down the metabolism and so that makes sense on that level and i think that's the case for a lot of people and that's all it really takes it's just to overcome dieting and voila you know quit doing stupid stuff and asking more of your body than you give in return and your metabolism will come right back up to a healthy level but what i find most interesting is uh, this the connection with this hormone leptin and I think if you were looking for a hormonal cause, a uh, master and commander of the metabolism, you know, w- w- the hormone leptin appears to be the hormone that tells the thyroid what to do. So the thyroid may be totally healthy, everything's fine, you may have plenty of iodine as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of cases where it probably just has nothing to do with the health of the thyroid gland. It has everything to do with the hormone leptin, which... If it's not present, if you're anorexic, or if you have it in very, very uh, large amounts, but your body is resistant to its actions, uh, you're going to have the symptoms of having a low metabolism and a low body temperature. Your body turns down the, the jets and cools things off. Now, this all makes w- too much sense. Because leptin is something that, you know, your body fat communicates with your brain and tells it when to secrete leptin. So it only makes sense that the the body, the outer layer, is really communicating to the rest of the body, giving it an update um, on on what's going on. And if body stores or body fat levels go down, leptin levels go down, and that triggers the. Uh, the body temperature to go down to reserve and store uh, calories and uh, not burn through as many and slow down the metabolism. It also triggers uh, an increased appetite. So again, it's trying to self-regulate the system and the signals on whether you need more food or whether you want to run your metabolism at high, at optimal levels, or run it on low in preservation mode all comes from how much body fat you have stored. Well, the problem is not a lack of leptin. The problem is a short circuit of the leptin system and people being resistant to the hormone leptin. That is definitely something that we're going to be honed in. Very, you know, very, very observant in 2010 and the years to come is really trying to figure out what in the world is causing us to be leptin resistant. As you know, I think fructose is probably the one of the chief leaders in, in creating leptin resistance right now, but I just Googled the other day, inflammation causes leptin resistance, which puts us right back to omega-6 and all different kinds of environmental toxins and you know all different kinds of things that can cause inflammation. But uh, anyways, very interesting stuff. Wanted to look into that. Look for that follow-up post, and I will talk to you next week. Thanks again. Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health.